Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll start a whole new series here, again based on your wonderful suggestions. This time around the theme is associated with aquatic animals, because this time around I wanted to see about finding some of the most bizarre, I guess most original type animals found in the sea and lots of great suggestions so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about them throughout this week this first one I thought I would make as a treat for everybody because I haven't done one of these in a while but based on two of your suggestions I thought it would be great to mix them together into another mixtape uh, the last mixtape I did was a couple of months back I think it was around November or so of last year and basically the idea is I try to fit several similar themed uh, animals together into one place if I can or they have a theme on their own of them being let's say close to being true but most likely this associated with uh, very easily finding stuff in the real world and with this with these two particular suggestions I thought it would make a great example and I'm talking about the particular entities or monsters in the sea known as one the bishop fish and then two a variation of it known as the sea monk they may actually be the same thing altogether because of the way that they were found and the very similar timelines that they were found so they could actually be one and the same but for the purpose of this video I'm going to describe it as two separate items and then that way again it'll be a nice treat for everybody when it comes to your uh, suggestions and doing another mixtape for you so first off let's talk about the bishop fish sometimes it's called actually the sea bishop but most commonly it's called the bishop fish and it was a type of sea monster that was found sometime in the 16th century uh, what's interesting to note about this particular bishop fish is it wasn't just found by any particular person like let's say a nobody no it was actually brought up to the king of that time of that area the king of Poland so perhaps the most prominent person within that entire land where it was found knew about his existence still this this particular bishop fish seems to have almost like an urban legend status because it's only been seen twice apparently and both those times it was noted and it was chronicled but then that's it it hasn't appeared anywhere else thereafter so whether this was something made up altogether whether it was something that was one of a kind and then later died and that's why we haven't seen it anymore or whether it just went into straight hiding and we um, purposely has not come up even with today you know people reaching the same areas there and living across the same areas it just hasn't come up on purpose to be seen again all of that has to be taken into consideration but here's what happened um, somehow some way this particular sea monster was found and when it was found it was taken straight to the king of Poland uh, probably as a gift of some sort and when this happened the king of Poland naturally being the king and having something like this a one-of-a-kind item he wanted to keep it all to himself and probably even show it off to some of the other dignitaries or whoever he met from some of the other nations um, it was also shown to a group of bishops hence its name the bishop fish um, and they were the ones that were able to um, I guess discern what it wanted and naturally with this creature being caught and then being taken to an area outside of its realm outside of the sea somehow it was able to suggest or gesture to those bishops um, because maybe they were the ones that were spending the most time with the bishop fish but it was able to suggest to them that it wanted to be released that it actually wanted to be placed back to the sea and when it did this I don't know how it did this I don't know if it used its head or if it spoke to them or if it even did it telepathically or if it did any other kind of gesture with its fins who knows but somehow those bishops were able to discern that it really wanted to get back to the sea so being the humanitarians that they were they decided to grant it its wish and so they took it back to the sea probably against the the wishes of the king of Poland who again wanted to keep it for himself they took it to the sea brought it there at that point it purportedly made a sign of the cross to them who knows if this was an intelligent sign from it or maybe it was mimicking the things that uh, these bishops were doing all the time maybe it saw them doing the sign of the cross a whole bunch of times and so it decided to mimic them but when this happened, it did it, and then it quickly disappeared into the sea. And then that was it. It wasn't seen 
for a little while thereafter. This is though the strange part as far as the Bishop Fish, um, and the reason why it's called the Monster of Sorts. Apparently, others that have encountered it or talked about the Bishop Fish, it took on like a life of its own, like its own urban legend status, like I mentioned earlier. Apparently, this was uh, Bishop Fish was a monster that was quite powerful, and people would say that uh, whenever it would extend its arms, the sea in turn would extend as well. Like it would almost like um, Noah, it would part the seas almost, and this is how it would trap fishermen. Uh, any fisherman that came into its realm, it would do this particular thing. I don't know if it was magic or some other form of telepathy, I mean, I'm sorry, telekinesis, who knows, but it would do this and it would try to trap the fisherman's boat so that way it could in turn try to either A, feast on the boat itself, or if there was, let's say, um, some women there on the boat, then it would actually try to lure the women and then somehow I guess mate with them. I don't know. That's where it takes a really weird part. The, these stories that are tied to the bishop fish. So if you're going with that angle, I'm thinking that it was more along the lines of the usual fisherman tales, where they describe these tall tales. Oh, where they say, "Oh yeah, I encountered the bishop fish, and this is what happened." When of course it's all made up, and it's just as a sense of bravado and as a sense of killing time between all the many travels between countries altogether. I'm thinking it's much, much more likely that because some of the tales would eventually take on the sorts where they would get these females or the women from the boats. They would absorb their energy. They would send the carcasses back to the fishermen as a warning it, it's crazy stuff it started to get um, even to the point where sometimes they could even make storms appear uh, and then clear all together make the ocean stormy and then at rest um, it, it's 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 out there so it's it's far beyond the thing so the second time the bishop fish was reportedly encountered was in an ocean near Germany also around that same time this time in 1531 and when it was captured, it didn't do anything like before when it came to gesturing or doing the signs of the cross. Instead, purportedly, this bishop fish, the one that was caught, it just simply took on like a stoic nature. It just simply was completely still. It didn't eat. It didn't talk. It didn't motion. It didn't do anything. And so much so that it actually did this almost to the point where it, um, it was actually harming itself because after a few days of not eating, then it died. It died, in fact, after three days of doing this non-activity. And this was the bishop fish that has been quoted and, and featured in a book uh, from a guy, a professor, by the name of Conrad Gessner, uh, with the book is called um, Historia Animalium, and I'll talk about that here in a few minutes, too because he describes not only that but some other um, strange characteristics of another fish but yeah those are the particular uh, I guess interesting things tied to the bishop fish now let's talk about that other fish that I was just mentioning and it's called the monk fish which you'll see a picture of here the monk fish was interesting to note this was a very similar looking fish also found around the same time the mid 1500s or so uh, not quite uh, let's say close to Poland but it was somewhere still in the Europe I mean it was in a place where it was found off the coast of the Danish island of Zealand and when it was found and the way it was described you'll see some very close similarities with what it uh, it does for starters um, the timeline. It was again found in the mid 1500s and it wasn't seen pretty much any time after that um, when it comes to its encounters. And the way it looks, people the way that found it, described it, uh, they say it looked like what could be, like if you were to take uh, a monk, like an actual monk, like a Friar Tuck type monk from the Robin Hood tales and merge it with some kind of sea animal that's what it would look like altogether the way it was described it is it was a quote unquote fish that looked superficially like a monk as well and you'll see the similarities to it here and this was also a fish that was chronicled within that very same book that I just mentioned, the Historia Animalium, by this guy, Conrad Gessner. So much so, in fact, that it was within the very same volume, too. Because this guy, he created several volumes of it, volumes 1, 2, 3, 
and four and then I believe some more after that and so they were both chronicled within the very same book not really much details as far as the sea monk um, because there wasn't too many encounters it didn't have the same thing where like a group of bishops found it or that it even traveled to the king himself but the only thing um, the only other encounter that happened was apparently that very same year um, it was found I'm sorry it was the, the only interesting to know I'm sorry is to mention is that again it was found off in the very same year or the same time period that the bishop fish was found too so they're both very very similar to one another and that's about it that's that's about much as much information that's given now real quickly let's talk about how these two were chronicled um, there was a guy by the name of Conrad Gessner and he created a very popular series of books that he called um, the Historia Animalium and normally I would think like this is like uh, Ripley's believe it or not type books but doing some more inf uh, look into the info tied to these books he's actually uh, somebody that took his research very seriously so what he was was he was a professor and a doctor at what was essentially a precursor of the University of Zurich and he decided to create a series of books where he would try to chronicle all the known animals I guess within the animal kingdom but he took this with a very serious approach uh, in fact his research style has been described on having four basic principles important principles but very basic number one is observation number two is dissection number three is travel and then number four probably the most important one an accurate description of the animals so this was a guy a doctor and a professor that was taking his work very very seriously and he wanted to create these books and he only again not did one volume but he did four volumes going forward I mention all of this because the fact that he talks about the bishop fish and the sea monk it really makes you think that there actually was a chance that people did encounter these monsters whatever they were because with the guy uh, that professor taking these, this work so seriously he probably would not have placed something like this within his books I mean this was a guy that uh, for all intents and purposes was trying to make sure that his claims were not just thrown away like as tall tales or anything involving made up type stuff just to sell his books no it seemed like he was an important scholar he was somebody that was a respected scholar and he wanted to make sure that his work was taken seriously and so that's the type of level of dedication that he took to these books now there was um, several areas where um, a lot of the information in his books would draw from folk tales from myths from legends um, but at the same time again he, his thing was about making sure that what was presented within the book was as accurate or almost as accurate as could be he was just simply gathering the info and then presenting it to the public so again it really makes you think and wonder you know as far fetched as the, the idea of a bishop fish and a sea monk uh, purportedly being found and making gestures and in some cases probably talking to people about going back to the sea um, the fact that it was chronicled in these books it makes you wonder how true this could be that there's a chance that it, they really were real now as far as what they could have been mistaken as uh, both of these fishes there are comparisons that make really really good sense like for example with the sea monk um, his most basic comparison seems to be something involving a squid I mean you're looking at this drawing here this was by a guy a zoologist there in the 1800s his name is Japetus Steenstrup and he wanted to go ahead and try to find as much real base world possible comparisons to say you know what it could be that this was in actuality not a sea monk but in actuality a squid and so you can see the really close comparisons especially when the backside of the squid is shown how something like this could be mis easily mis be misinterpreted because when we're talking about let's say doing observations in the sea if this thing is especially under the sea and you have all these um, darkened seas or in some cases uh, let's say murky seas one can see how it takes it, it can take a different 
look, uh, how like a basic squid could look like something else to somebody with an untrained eye. Also, some of the other misinterpretations of what the bishop fish and also what the sea monk could be, because again, they're pretty much synonymous with each other. They've been interpreted as being either also an angel shark or maybe even like a warped walrus of some sort, like let's say a walrus that might have been born with some deformities. Um, also, they've been described as being several types of seals. Um, all of this stuff are real-world applications that could be the actual fishes or the monsters themselves. It's just, again, the way that the sea looks and that we're talking about various items um, camouflaging and, 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 let's say, canceling the ability to see something 100% as you would on dry land, um, it, would, it makes kind of sense that, that a lot of, of what we actually see in the, in, the, in the sea itself could be misinterpreted as having eyes, as having arms, as looking at something man-like, like a man-like fish, than what it really is altogether. But yeah, those are the two items for my mixtape, the bishop fish and the sea monk. So if anyone has any more information that they can provide, uh, very rare creatures that haven't been seen since, since their discovery back in the 16th century or so. So if anyone has any more information about them, about uh, any other encounters, that'd be great to hear. Um, otherwise, if anyone are from those areas uh, in particular and know about any more other tales tied to them, that'd be really good to hear too. So, all right, everybody, um, let's go ahead and I'll do some more videos throughout the rest of the week. And then that way I'll uh, do some more of your aquatic suggestions soon. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.